408 hours of me using this 14 inch MacBook Pro 17 days later y'all there's some things that I thought I can overlook with this 14 inch MacBook Pro that I just can't we got to talk about it all right so the first thing is that I can't overlook y'all is the notch y'all now this is something that I personally thought I was going to be able to overlook but I just can't y'all it's just like to me Although people may say it's not an eyesore, to me, y'all, it is noticeable, y'all. It is, to me, an eyesore on this screen. Now, can I somewhat overlook it? Yeah, I can because there's a lot of great things with this machine that we're going to talk about here in a second. But when it comes to this notch, y'all, I personally just don't see the point of it. I wish they would have just did just a camera cutout on the screen and just left it at that. Now, I understand that Apple has the whole branding when it comes to the notch with their iPhones and different things like that. I'm just hoping they don't bring this to something like the iPad because that would just be... Ah, just don't do that to the iPad. Now, I would have felt like this would have been needed if they would have gave us Face ID on here or if they would have gave us Center Stage. I feel like the notch would have been a little bit more warranted versus it just being a normal 1080p camera. That is actually really good, but we're going to talk about that later. But when it comes to just the functionality of the notch, it doesn't really serve a purpose other than just Apple just wanted to brand everything with a notch. But the next thing I got to talk about, y'all, is the thickness of this machine, y'all. Now, to me, y'all, I'm just not a huge fan of the thickness of this machine. I'm just going to be honest with y'all because I have here. Hold on. Let me let me get it real quick. Let me dust it off, man. It's been in the cut here for a while. This is the 2015 MacBook Pro. Now, this is the model that I used to use here. It's kind of a big boy, but what I do like about this machine is the size. Like, the size of it is, as far as the thickness of it, is very, very slim in comparison to something of, like, what we see here on this 14-inch MacBook Pro or the new MacBook Pros that we have, either the 14 or the 16. Now, I understand the reason of why they actually went with this design as far as the thickness of it and kind of going back to that retro style. We actually for the SD card reader. We asked for the HDMI port. Uh, we asked for more Thunderbolt 4 ports. And then they give it to us. So it's almost like we can't complain with what they gave us. But in the same sense, it's almost like, man, like I like it. But then it's like when you look at it, you're kind of like, man, she thick. It is what it is. Like I said, it's not something that's just like, uh, it's not a deal breaker by any means because, again, there's so much power in this machine of what we're getting. I actually prefer the slimmer factor than what we actually get here on this 14-inch uh, MacBook Pro. Now, the other thing that I got to talk to you guys about, that's dealing with the HDMI port. Now, this kind of goes hand in hand with what I just actually talked about because now, I understand the reason of why we are getting the HDMI port, because this is something as consumers we ask for. We want to be able to output some more displays, and I think with this machine here, you can output to three different displays, which is something that I'm thinking about doing here behind me. I ain't really, I ain't, I ain't got all the way there yet, but it is something that I'm thinking about. But when it comes to this HDMI port, I honestly feel like this is the main reason why this machine is as thick as it is because of the size of the HDMI port. It's literally almost the full width of this machine in itself. I feel like for those people out there that may not need an HDMI port, maybe they could have offered an option without the HDMI port because when you start thinking about the ports on here, the MagSafe, the Thunderbolt, the SD card reader, the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, all of those are smaller ports that really wouldn't expand the size of the width of this machine so for me I just wish they would have given us an option to whereas if we wanted a slimmer model then we don't get the HDMI port and then if you do want the HDMI port then you get this machine right here now the next thing I got to talk about with y'all is the SD card reader now on my nine day review that I did which is my one week review I'll throw that right here on the screen as well as down the description section below I talked about the issues that I had with the SD card reader all right y'all so right now you can see here one of the issues that I have when I'm actually using the SD card slide you can see right here I've been having issues trying to get my files to actually transfer using it like right now you can see it says 27 gigs 27.3 gigs and it's taking about two hours just to transfer that footage all right so y'all can see right here so now i use this dongle here and i put the sd card i put the sd card in here and you can see now 26.66 gigs and now it's down to just five minutes now four minutes whereas before if i'm using the sd card slot it's not allowing me actually to transfer the footage off the cards and then it reads like two hours to be able to take that footage off so I'm not sure if it's this or is something going wrong 
with this uh SD card drive, but proof is in the pudding. Y'all see it right here. I'm transferring it off of this drive. Takes about four minutes. I transfer it off of the slot. Takes about two hours. Now you guys saw in that clip that I had issues with this reader to where it's not actually allowing me to pull my footage or it's taking a crazy long time in order for me to pull footage off of my SD cards. Now the reason why it was doing that, what I've kind of come to a conclusion with is the fact that my SD cards that I use to film this video, to film this angle over here, as well as my audio as well is not really like the high-end cards. I use the SanDisk Extreme, but they're not the SanDisk Extreme Pros. I recommend you guys actually use the SanDisk Extreme Pros with these machines because of these SD card readers. And to be honest with y'all, I was using kind of like a cheaper uh, SD card, which I feel like it still should be able to read it because sometimes it's finicky, like it reads it sometimes and then sometimes it doesn't read it. So I recommend you guys just upgrade your SD cards to at least the SanDisk Extreme Pro and not the SanDisk Extreme if you guys are SanDisk users like myself because I feel like this is what you're going to need to get high performance out of this SD card slot. Now I want to talk about size here for a second and the reason why I personally chose 14 inch over the 16 inch. Now the reason I did this is simply because when it comes to the 14 inch by this machine, again, we just talked about the thickness of this machine. I want a machine that I can be able to travel with that's gonna give me more of a portable style feeling versus lugging around the huge 16 inch that they have of this machine. Because if I'm putting this into like a backpack or if I just wanna be out and about, I feel like the 14 inch is gonna give you a little bit more freedom of space within your backpack. Now, don't get me wrong, y'all. The 16 inch display is absolute fire. I actually prefer the larger display because I feel like you're getting way more screen real estate whenever I'm uh, browsing the web, whenever I'm checking emails, whenever I'm editing videos, or just doing a whole lot of things on here, even watching Netflix movies and different things like that. I feel like I'm getting way more immersive of an experience with this beautiful ProRes display that we have on this machine. And don't get me wrong, the 14 inch is great too, but that 16 inch is just absolute fire. But it's just, again, I don't want to lug around a huge 16 inch machine. So that's why I went with the 14 inch. Now, the other thing I want to talk about with y'all is my current workflow. Now, when it comes to my workflow on my machine, I do a lot of things, right? I wake up in the morning, I check my emails, uh, I do a little bit of internet browsing, Twitter checking, IG checking, all of that type of stuff like that before I actually get to work. So then I go into my editing software like Final Cut Pro, or I may use the SD card reader here to be able to offload footage and to be able to get into my workflow. Now, one of the things that I got to say about this machine here, y'all, is the workflow speed is just crazy like the performance of this machine y'all everything is just fast when it comes to offloading footage editing footage like it cuts through 4k like nobody's business y'all it's a really really good high performance machine for pretty much any of your needs now i haven't tested this out for those people out there that may be engineers and they use like 3d models and all of that kind of stuff like that but i will say for Final Cut Pro uh, editing, Adobe Premiere, if you guys are even uh, YouTubers like myself, filmmakers, then I highly recommend this machine, man. The 14 inch or even the 16 inch, they both perform at a high level when it comes to getting things done and just being able to be fast throughout your workflow. I kind of touched on this a little bit and that is the screen quality, y'all. Screen quality on this machine is it's fire, y'all. Like, there's absolutely nothing bad about the screen quality at all. Like, if you're watching things like uh, Netflix or if you're watching Disney Plus or any of those type of applications that's going to give you high-resolution imagery, or even YouTube, because I'm filming this in 4K, so, you know, make sure you click on that little thing over there change it to 4K so you can see the goodness. <laughs> when you're actually using this screen, y'all, it looks fire, y'all. No matter what you guys are putting on this screen, if it's shot in a high-resolution format, it's going to look amazing on this display and that goes for the 16 inch as well now the next two things i got to talk about with y'all kind of goes hand in hand and this is issues that i had with my previous machine that i got here behind me that i just showed y'all and that is quietness and then also the heat now for me one of the biggest things that I hated about this machine here was how loud it would get. Now, this is an Intel version that's behind me of what I had. So y'all already know how that goes. So, but this machine, man, being an M1 Pro or even the M1 Max, y'all, it is super freaking quiet. Like, like right now, y'all, it's sitting here on this desk. I just got the desktop here open, man, and it is super quiet. Like, you don't hear anything out of it. Now, another thing that I hated about this machine behind me is whenever I was editing on that machine, I would have it on my lap or whatever, sitting downstairs watching TV or whatever while editing, and then I would notice, like, literally my entire lap would just be blazing hot. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? To the point where I have to take it off my lap, sit it down on something else just so it can kind of cool 
cool down, right? But with this machine right here, y'all, the 14 inch or even the 16 inch, y'all, it is absolutely like cool to the touch no matter what I'm doing. Now, there are times it's gonna get a little warm, but it's nowhere near as hot as this machine here behind me would get to the point where I easily feel comfortable sitting this on my lap and it's not gonna burn the heck out of my kneecaps. Uh, but, but yeah, man, like this machine, when it comes to being quiet, as well as being able to handle heat and disperse that heat, it's a really good machine when it comes to that too. All right, so another thing I wanna talk about with y'all that I'm in love with this machine with, and that is the battery life. Now, battery life on this machine, y'all, is absolute fire as well. Now, there's been times where I've been editing and I've literally gotten through an entire video edit on a single battery to the point where I didn't need to go throughout the house carrying around my charger or anything like that. I can easily just carry this bad boy around, edit what I need to, and then just close it down and be on about my day. So whereas with this machine here, man, I would probably get through maybe 30, 40 minutes max with this machine, battery would be dead. But with this machine right here, man, to be honest, since I've had it, I probably only charged this bad boy up Man, I would probably say all of a total of maybe three, four times since I've had it within like a two week time period, just based on my personal usage. But man, like I tell y'all, battery life on here, I feel extremely comfortable being able to go on and about my day or even go out and about outside of the house and not have to feel like I need to have a charger with me. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're doing heavy, intensive stuff, then it's still gonna be able to drain a battery, but it's not gonna be as bad as some of the other machines that I've used in the past. Now, another thing that's been a big topic, I would say that a lot of people kind of hate that Apple made this decision, but to be honest with you, I actually love the fact that they made this decision and that is the removal of the touch bar. I never really used the touch bar on this machine here behind me at all because I just didn't like it. Honestly, I felt like it was something that was adding additional stress to the battery, especially on the placement of where it was at. It was literally right above the battery power, which again, there was a lot of heat be in this area right here up top where that touch bar is at. So I just felt like, why would I actually use that? I wish there was a way on that machine to be able to turn it off. So I'm actually glad they got rid of the touch bar because again, it saves on heat up here at the top as well as it's gonna help save on the battery life as well. Now, the other thing I gotta talk about that I really like about this machine, y'all, and that is the speaker quality. Now, there is a difference when it comes to the 14 inch and the 16 inch. Now, I'm gonna start with the 14 inch. Now, the 14 inch, Speaker quality, y'all, sounds really good. Definitely punchy, it's got kind of that heavier bass side to it, to the point where whenever I'm editing my videos and different things like that, I don't ever have to worry about having like additional speakers. Now again, when I'm editing on my M1, uh, my M1 Mac Mini behind me, I do have side speakers there because you know, the speakers on the Mac Mini is just like really non-existent. But, uh, so I do have them on that. But whenever I'm editing on this machine right here, I don't feel the need to have to put on headphones to be able to finish my edit because the speakers on this machine right out of the box is absolute fire to me. And it's to the point where you don't really need any third party speakers or headphones or anything like that to be able to get your workflow done. Now let's go ahead and talk about the 16 inch. Now, when it comes to which one is gonna be louder, the 16 inch y'all, is definitely like the wave for something like that because the 16 inch y'all obviously the bigger computer is going to have bigger drivers that's going to be able to give you uh, more punchier as well as going to give you a lot of output when it comes to the speaker now whether you get the 14 inch or the 16 inch you're still going to have a really good experience when it comes to the sound quality coming out of these speakers right here and that goes to even watching content like netflix youtube uh hulu disney plus whatever you guys are into speaker quality straight out of here is fire now another thing is kind of a small thing and it's something that I actually noticed on this keyboard right here. Now I do have the keyboard here by Apple. This is the one that has the touch ID on the keyboard right here. Now it's something that they introduced on here that I like that they brought over to the MacBook Pro and that is an emoji button because this is something that surprisingly I actually use this button a lot in text messages and different things like that because it's just something that's just really quick that I can just press a button, boom, it's gonna pop up my emoji list and I can just select the ones that I need and then boom, be on my way without having to click and then find it and all of that kind of stuff like that. So it's a small little thing, but I do like it. All right, and the last thing I gotta talk about that I do like is the HD webcam on this machine. Now, to be honest with y'all, the HD webcam, y'all, is actually pretty good. It's really up to par with something like the front-facing camera on your iPhone. I feel like they really took the same camera out of the iPhone 13, and then they kind of put it in here with the MacBook Pro, and it looks really good, y'all. It's definitely a night and day difference between what I had on this machine and what I'm getting on this machine right here. Now, the next thing I wanna kind of talk about with y'all is just some of the 
things that I wish this machine had. And it's not really a whole lot because again, this machine here is almost perfect, y'all. So the first thing I wanna talk about that I kinda touched on earlier, and that is with this notch here. Now I wish, one, I wish the notch was gone. Uh, two, I wish they actually added in the center stage feature that we got on the iPad mini. That is a super fire feature. I'm always talking to my guy CJ Unplugged as well as Terry Warfield, and we always are on FaceTime just discussing different things, and it's really dope when you're actually talking with them and you're able to move around the room, do whatever you guys need to do, and it's gonna keep you guys centered in that frame, and I just wish this was something that they would have brought to uh, the MacBook Pro. Now, the other thing I wish with the same camera module, I wish they would have actually gave us Face ID. Now, again, I get that they give us Touch ID, which is cool. It is super fast, I love it. But it's something about just being able to do this, right? Boom, and then bam, it sees you, opens your laptop up, and you're good to go. I just wish they would bring that feature to the MacBook Pro. I just think it would be a super dope feature. And the last thing, y'all, that I wish, Apple, somehow make this bad boy slimmer man i don't know how you guys would do it because again you gave us the hdmi port which again i have a love-hate relationship with it because on the other end i actually need to use it for the monitors behind me and then on the other end i kind of wish they kind of did without it because it would have made it slimmer so i'm kind of in a uh, i'm kind of in a tough space when it comes to that but I just wish they would have gave us an option to be able to buy one with it and buy one without it and then change for a slimmer design. But, but y'all, that's pretty much it when it comes to this MacBook Pro, y'all. To be honest, this is an amazing laptop, y'all. Honestly, if you guys are a content creator, filmmaker, a true pro user, photographer, videographer, anything like that, this is going to be the machine for you, period. Now, I understand when it comes to pricing, Pricing is kind of expensive, but when you think in terms of what you're going to be doing with this machine, honestly, you should be having the mindset that if I buy something like this, I'm already doing something that's going to make me that money back. Make sure you keep that mindset when you guys are thinking about which machine is going to be best for you. Honestly, when it comes to the M1 Pro or the M1 Max, either one of them are going to be fine. Honestly, the M1 Pro is probably more than enough for 90% of the people that are out there. And then you've always got that 10% that's just going to need that extra additional cores uh, with the M1 Max. So, but nonetheless, y'all, that is my review. Two weeks later, 17 days, 408 hours with this bad boy right here, y'all. To be honest with y'all, man, I'm speechless when it comes to this 14-inch MacBook Pro. Literally, it's probably like my favorite piece of tech of 2021. I, I said it, I said it. You can quote me on that. <laughs> Open, it's time to explore. I'm knocking down all of these doors. I say, I say, I say.